Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Bob, Anthony, and Sensei. Your words of music inspire us all. Welcome. This is my 50th school year. It's a little strange that I measure my life by the first Saturday in June, not the 16th day of February. I remember going to kindergarten 50 years ago and learning how to tie my shoes and write my name. I know most of you were working on like dark matter calculations, the twin prime conjecture, things like that, but I'm a little slow. Um, one thing I do remember from kindergarten was nap time. That's something Anthony called environmental chemistry last year. I taught that class last year, sophomores. Um, perhaps we should have nap time here. Cut out a chunk, you know, in midday and have a little nap and we get right back on track. I remember during this period, we would lay on beach towels and we would scoot around to get next to our friends and we'd talk to each other, then we'd giggle. Then we'd get in trouble. That was my first time I was ever sent to the principal. One of many over the next 12 years. I, little did I realize I was uh, forging a career path. <laughs> but one day in November, the principal came in during nap time, and I could see him. You ever do that thing when you're pretending to sleep? So like maybe your dad will pick you up when you're sleeping. You got your eyes like this, and you look at your eyelashes. And I could see him come in. And I could tell he was crying. And I had never seen a grown man weep in my life. So I go, wow, this is weird. And he went over to Mrs. Oberweiss, my kindergarten teacher, and he whispered something to her, and she collapsed. And then the principal hugged her, and they talked, and they cried. And I, you know, a little shook up. Um, principal left, and I heard him go to Mrs. Dunn's room, the first grade teacher next door. And I heard, oh my god, no. And then, you know, we're little kids, we don't know what's going on. So eventually Mrs. Oberweiss has to sit in a circle around her. and She explained to us the president had been shot. I don't think we really understood that at that time, but we were all sad and every kid was crying. Sometimes I wonder about her judgment at that point, telling little kids some, something so grave, but we would have found after, out after school with the other kids uh, once we got on the bus. That bus ride home was terrible. Kids were crying and sad. The bus driver wasn't much better. We went home and on the one TV channel, which is just as good as the 500 I get now, um, we, we watched and the whole country was emotionally crushed. I don't know what else to compare it to except if you can remember like 9-11. It, it was really bad. And at that point in time, anything could have happened. We had just finished staring down the Soviets over the Cuban Missile Crisis. We could have literally and I know what literally means. Literally set the entire world on fire at that point. None of this would have happened. None of you would have been here, neither would I. But people stepped up. From great adversity came great deeds. Shining displays of technology and humanitarianism. We went to the moon, designed the space shuttle, developed amazing computers. The battle for civil rights and women equality began. And all Americans had to pay attention, if they wanted to or not. Adversity didn't take a sabbatical. Apollo 1 caught on fire, three astronauts, astronauts died, and Dr. King was murdered. But we marched on. These amazing accomplishments were not led by famous people from television and sports. They were done by unassuming, intelligent people who knew the value of an excellent education. These men and women did not fear hard work and dedication but actively sought them out and embodied them and demanded them from others, their fellow students, their teachers, and their politicians. These people we might call nerds today, I think I call them superheroes. Two of them I call mom and dad. Dr. King said days before he was killed, the ultimate measure of a person is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and adversity. Here at IMSA, we are titans 
You can see a little bit of it up there. I don't know how many of you know the mythology of Titans. It's kind of stolen by the Greeks from Mesopotamia. The Titans were the, the first generation of gods, the embodiment of the new formed world. Their mother was the earth, their father was the sky. Uh, they had to overcome great adversity before they could rule the cosmos. Their adversity came in the form of abuse of dad, the sky. So when dad was coming down one day to be, you know, rain terror and everything on everybody, they jumped him, they grabbed his arms and legs and spread him across the heavens then performed a little surgery. You can ask Dr. Kylie what that little surgery was later. And then they went on to create art, literature, poetry, science, and math. This school year, I want you to be a titan, a superhero. It'll not be easy. You'll have face a lot of obstacles. At one point, you'll probably have two papers and two tests. Uh, papers due on Tuesday, two tests on Tuesday, and a soccer game on Monday. Um, your printer will run out of ink, you'll sleep through your bio class, your teacher will demand that you think deeply and argue in greater detail, you'll think your teacher's a jerk and then elaborate a specific type of jerk, he or she is, in greater detail. Staff, you'll have reports, interims, grade comments, procurement, budgets, and occasionally three meetings all on Wednesday morning before 10 a.m. Your printer will not connect, and believe it or not, all the copiers will be down. <laughs> the principal will ask you to think of another way to accomplish your work. You will think the principal is a jerk, and then use Moodle or Facebook to illustrate the type of jerk he is in greater detail. <laughs> but all of you remember, you chose to be part of IMSA, to become the best learner you could be. You cannot improve without trials and adversity. British Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli said, there is no education like adversity. I'd like to conclude my remarks with a final request. First, with the members of the sophomore class, please stand. Would everyone else, junior, seniors, faculty, staff, alumni, and special guests, please join me in welcoming the Illinois Math and Science Academy, the class of 2016.